Hello everybody, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. Happy 2024. I got the date right this time. It's the 1st of January. It's still morning, but I really wanted to. I just felt like making a video before doing all of my tasks, that my usual morning tasks. I just thought, you know what? Let's shoot. The sun is out. I got good lighting. It is crazy windy though, so I hope you won't hear the wind howling, but yeah i'm really happy to start the year with you guys and give you all my best wishes wishing you all the best like all the strength all the power all the courage all the <laughs> i keep thinking my neighbor's out but she just has her laundry like flapping around in the wind sorry all the motivation all the good things like may all your wishes come true this year i think 2024 is going to be a good year and i hope i'm not jinxing myself by saying that but i just feel really positive and grateful already for this year so i'm sending that all to you guys how how was your new year how have things been how are you i want to know please write everything down in the comments this is a safe place you can dm me i love talking to you guys no pressure at all of course but i just i love the little community we've built together through like how many years have i been on youtube now or on social media i l word you guys so much so let's get comfy i turn off the heating so you don't have the sound in the background but i have a feeling that very soon i'm gonna get cold so if you're like me grab yourself a blanket very cozy and if you have a hot beverage hot baby actually maybe it's not winter where you are so grab yourself anything you want it's gonna be hot tea for me actually i let it steep a little too long and now it's bitter but It's not too bad. It's Darjeeling. I felt like something a little different today. Right, let's get started. So I finally want to wrap up the Belgium trip from November of 2023. I want to wrap that chapter up. And I did mention in one of the vlog videos that I was experiencing reverse culture shock back in Belgium. Because I think by that point, by November, I have had been in Japan a year and a half, probably a little over actually a year and a half so that had been the longest it had been since going back home to Belgium where I had spent most of my life born in the UK moved to Belgium when I was five moved to Japan when I was 30 so obviously after not being there for over a year and a half some things seemed a little off a little strange when I went back home and I want to share those with you and you can share yours with me and we can exchange and compare notes. What kind of reverse culture shock have you experienced after being abroad for some time? Right, let me start with the very obvious ones, maybe too obvious. First one is shoes indoors. Well, first of all, I stayed in a BnB and b and I made sure to remove my shoes at the entrance of my little room, my little BnB area, because it just felt wrong to be indoors with shoes. But going inside the building, I still had my boots on. Going up the stairs, I still had my boots on. And I had to walk through like a little forest area to get to my BnB. b and every time my shoes were a little bit muddy and there were like shoe prints on the stairs and stuff and I just felt really uncomfortable and the second part is that when I went to my mom's house the ground floor with the living room and the kitchen and those kind of areas shoes were okay because they have dogs and the dogs freely go in the garden and back into the house and paw prints and they just clean regularly right but it just felt really weird to have shoes indoors because obviously Japan you take off your shoes the minute you pass through the front door and I think even puppies, like pups, dogs, animals, they kind of clean off their paws when they go come back from walks. I think that even like some more fancy apartment complexes have like this little foot bath, animal foot bath area or like this little tap at the entrance of the building where you can clean your animal's feet. So yeah, that was definitely, it felt uncomfortable having my shoes on, but that is the more obvious one, <laughs> of course. The next obvious one are toilets. Now, I don't want to get too into it because TMI, I don't particularly enjoy the bidet function. I don't use it very much, so that's not something that I miss. I'm more of a wet wipe person, to be honest. So, <laughs> you know everything about me now. Um, <laughs> so I didn't exactly miss that. Like a lot of people say like, oh, the toilet paper was so scratchy on my poor butt uh, when I went back home. Nope, not me, wet wipes all the way. But 
what I did miss were the heated seats because it was pre-winter already really cold back in Belgium so the first few times I kind of had that little shock when I sat down on the toilet and the seat was very cold no heated seats the next one also kind of an obvious one is the convenience that I have here in Tokyo now before moving to Tokyo I was living in Brussels and I thought yeah Brussels is pretty convenient after having grown up mostly in rural areas practically in countrysides actually some houses were like completely in the middle of nowhere growing up so to me brussels felt convenient in my street there was a supermarket there were night shops it felt convenient but compared to tokyo brussels may as well have been the actual countryside because boy did I miss convenience stores when I was back in Belgium and I missed vending machines at every corner like you're walking down the street you're feeling a little bit thirsty parch mouth dry lips <laughs> check my wallet for some silver if you know you know um, you're feeling a little bit thirsty and probably like at the end of the street and the next street a little bit further you'll find a vending machine here in Tokyo wide selection cold drink hot drinks if it's the winter it's perfect but in belgium that's not the case night shops aren't open 24 7 for one vending machines aren't cheap and aren't easy to find in most of belgium brussels i can see vending machines in train stations and airports and sometimes they don't even really work the thing doesn't come out it gets stuck it's no Japan, it's no Tokyo, and for someone who actually gets pretty uncomfortable when I'm thirsty, like I always need to have like access to water easily, otherwise I feel anxious. I know, it's a weird thing, but I'd forgotten that feeling until I went back to Belgium. So yeah, convenience was a big one, and especially vending machines in the drink, I need a drink aspect right now kind of thing. The next thing I want to mention is customer service in Japan versus in Belgium. They are very different and to be honest I don't know which one I prefer because Japan is super polite. Customer is king. Like you serve the customer, you're going to be ultra polite, you're gonna use like the polite form of Japanese and you're gonna go out of your way I guess to serve that customer in the best way you can. So very polite but sometimes a little cold if you know what I mean. Whereas in Belgium, you can get some really polite people, of course, it's kind of hit or miss, kind of 50-50, but there is friendliness, warmth. You can talk to the salesperson, you can talk to the person that is bagging your groceries, I was talking to the pharmacist, you can talk to the person who is uh, preparing your bread and cutting up your bread and serving you at the bakery. You can have a conversation like, how's your day going? Oh, it's pretty cold outside today. The weather really sucks. Yada, yada, yada. So sure, it's not as polite, but it's warm and friendly. If you try to talk to a salesperson here the same way you would talk to a salesperson in Japan, they would just look at you like you have three heads. So it's very different. And I guess if I had to choose, I would prefer the politeness because at least it's consistent, you know what you're gonna get, you're gonna get someone competent most of the time. Whereas in Belgium, I do remember trying to get like something changed for my phone a few years back in Brussels and like I did not care if I walked out a happy customer or not. Whereas in Japan, usually they will care if you walk out of their store a happy, satisfied customer or not. But I do miss the friendliness, I do miss like striking up a conversation with a complete stranger just asking about their day. So yeah, about customer service, I am curious to know about what you guys think. What would you prefer? Like super polite, consistent, but maybe a little on the cold side, or friendly, you can strike up a conversation, sometimes it brightens your day, but it's inconsistent and sometimes you're just gonna be really frustrated with your customer service experience. I just spilled tea on myself and I can still feel it. The next one is uh, public toilets. Maybe this one is another one of the obvious ones. Public toilets in Japan are fairly clean. Even the ones in parks. Well, sometimes you only have squat toilets, which I'm not a fan of, but even toilets in public parks 
are gonna be relatively clean and not too smelly. Whereas public toilets in Belgium, even public toilets inside restaurants and train stations are usually gonna be pretty gross and I'd rather avoid them at all costs if I can. I have like this, not really fear, but unwillingness to use public toilets in general but since moving to Japan I have become a little more trusting <laughs> when I really have to go like uh, can I hold it in till I get home oh it's gonna be tight it's gonna be uncomfortable you know what I'm just gonna find a shopping mall toilets are usually really clean inside Japanese shopping malls and even train stations toilets are pretty much acceptable so that's another difference going back to Belgium I would never try and go at a public toilet unless i really really have to go whereas in japan you have you have toilets pretty much everywhere and 80 maybe 85 percent of the time they're gonna be pretty clean the next thing i want to talk about is how people behave in public in japan versus belgium there is one bad point in belgium and one bad point in japan for me personally this is my personal opinion let's start with belgium because it's kind of obvious People have no problem airing their dirty laundry out in public and by that, if you don't understand the expression, it means they have no problem causing a scene in public in front of everyone, making everyone uncomfortable and kind of cringy and you know, all that stuff. And I was reminded of that when I was at the supermarket in Belgium, not even in Brussels, so that's something else, like it's usually a quiet town where my mother lives. So the fact that this happened there was, you know, not as expected as it would be in a bigger city But it still happened. I was at the supermarket buying some snacks for myself and a lady was going off at the cashier She was apparently an alcoholic according to the cashier who knows the local people and she was she was going off She didn't look drunk or anything, but she was just like verbally abusing this guy like dropping slurs and just being horrible and like threatening him and everything I was just like I, I, I'd forgotten about that and I'd gotten used to not having that in my life of course things like these can happen in Japan people are people we're not robots but there's a thing about like reading the room like reading the air here in Japan and usually you don't make a scene in public like I said it does happen we're humans with very strong emotions, but it's not as frequent. I don't think I've ever witnessed something like that since my almost two years of living here. Whereas I'm back in Belgium for a week and I've heard people speaking loudly in the street and this lady going off at the cashier in a really, really, in a really, really vile and aggressive way. So that's a big difference. The bad point for me in Japan that I struggled with when I first moved here and then struggled with again when I returned back from Belgium is the lack of spatial awareness people have when walking down the street or in public areas. Maybe it's just a me thing because I know I walk fast, I like to get to, from A to B as quickly as I can, I, I don't dawdle, I don't look too much at my phone when I'm walking, but even people who aren't looking at phones they're just walking and then suddenly they'll stop to look at a sign at the in the middle of the street, in the middle of the path where people are walking. It happens more often than you think and it kind of drives me crazy. So I know that in the grand scheme of things it's not such a bad thing but it's still a little bit of a pet peeve of mine where people just walk out from a restaurant or an izakaya or a store talking to their friends who are behind them and just don't look where they're going i've been walked into like almost rammed into bicycles are the same issue like knocked over by a bicycle so many times since moving here I have to be on high alert when I'm walking down the street at all times, not because of bad people trying to rob me or <laughs> do bad things to me, just people who lack spatial awareness. <sighs> that was my rant. I'm sorry I'm saying something bad about Japan, people don't really like that. I might get the comment, why don't you just go back home then? This is my one personal bad thing <laughs> for me right now about Japan. People don't look where they're going and that really bug bugs me i don't like having to be on high alert all the time okay quick fire round 
Belgium is rainy and cold and rains like 70% of the year and I did not miss how gray and dark it is. Um, Belgium is so expensive now seeing that the yen is so low at the moment making everything else in other countries looks so expensive and public transportation in Belgium effing sucks. I know Japan is like up there with public transportation being on time and clean and efficient. Belgium has always sucked. It's bad. It's friggin bad. You can see it in one of my videos that I had to wait like 20 minutes for a train and even though it might not seem like a lot, 20 minutes, when you, you've been living in Tokyo, it's it's a lifetime. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to comment your own experiences with reverse culture shock because I'm really, really curious to know. Happy 2024. I'm wishing you only the best for this year and I look forward to what's to come. Keep well. I'm, I am word you all. You're the best and um, to another amazing year together. Hello, y'all.